Dr. Donahue is going to present uh, another perspective on third nerve palsy surgery. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, I, I really like that procedure, Monty, when you have uh, aberrant regeneration to the eyelid. It's, it really works splendidly, and, and it just isn't well enough discussed, so I appreciate you mentioning it. I'm going to talk about third nerve palsy that is not associated with aberrant regeneration, and I want to give kudos to Rachel Cooley, who was our former fellow last year, who put uh, this series together and has some of the pictures for us. No, again, no relevant conflicts of interest. Uh, Monty talked about the importance of trying to be able to figure out uh, how to balance the forces appropriately in these patients with, with uh, really only using two, two muscles. I just had not been happy with the superior oblique transposition or even with lateral rectus disinsertion and attaching it to the periosteum. I felt you still had not completely inactivated the lateral rectus muscle, and as a result, you still had a tendency for a residual or recurrent uh, <coughs> strabismus. <laughs> and uh, despite you know, Linda's great paper, Linda Doggy's great paper in, in uh, this, this, uh, discussing the split transposition and putting over in the medial rectus, I just have not had good success with, with that. So one of the things that we started to do is to um, extirpate the lateral rectus. So just like if you had extirpated the inferior oblique, dissecting it all the way back to where it enters the tenon's capsule, trying to get it completely off of the pulleys, uh, and then combine that with the medial rectus resection. And I like those results better than, uh, than simply putting the muscle on the, on the periosteum or sewing it there as far as, as, uh, as, far as that goes. <laughs> so we isolate the lateral rectus. I like to secure it with the suture so I've got to, able to hold on to it, then disinsert it dissect it all the way back to the entrance of tenons, and then I clamp it there, and then cut it at the clamp and, and cauterize. And, and it is a little scary when you're doing that because this lateral rectus is just disappears completely, and you'd be concerned you don't have any abduction force. But I think you've still got some attachments of the pulleys to the lateral aspect of the globe, and, and that, that, does, that does help. So this is, a, this is not a video, it's a picture. The first is uh, clamping it on a, on a green hook. We then disinsert the muscle with a suture. Go ahead and dissect it all the way back, put a modified Hartman clamp on there just like you were resecting it and then and cut it off, cauterize it and, and, and let it go. We've uh, now done 12 patients uh, and with this technique. Almost all of them are, are, were very old. They had uh, in, their, in their late 60s or 70s or 80s and had tumors or other problems or um, walleye bilateral intranuclear ophthalmoplegia. I'll talk about that in a bit. So I wasn't as uncomfortable with that in them as I was with the 21-year-old woman who had a presumed schwannoma of her third nerve without aberrant regeneration because it is a really very permanent procedure. But this is a, a patient with, a, with the uh, right eye that has a partial third nerve palsy with absolutely no adduction at all and a very tight lateral rectus. There's our pre-op photos at, at eight days. You can see she has very nice straight eyes. She does not still have great adduction, but it has maintained through 10 weeks, and a number of these patients have come back now one and two years out with, uh, with good follow-up and, and no residual strabismus. Second case, uh, preoperatively here, again, you see the, the ptosis, but not the uh, significant aberrant uh, re to the eyelid, and uh, preoperatively does not even get to the midline. And uh, nine days postoperatively, still doesn't get greatly to the, to the uh, midline, but the, the primary position is, is uh, much better here. So we had, we had 12 patients. Six of them were unilateral. Two of them were bilateral third nerve palsy, so they have huge deviations. One was a transection of a medial rectus muscle at the time of uh, ethmoid sinus yeah. surgery. One with a walleye bilateral um, internuclear ophthalmoplegia and two others, one with a, a tumor in the orbit and, and uh, uh, another one that had previous, previous uh, surgery with, recession, with the maximum recession of the lateral rectus. Our mean deviations were 44 prism diopters, but at two months post-operative, we had been, been able to decrease to two prism diopters, and we've had recur uh, minimal recurrence now up to three years of follow-up with some of these patients. So in conclusion, I think this is a second alternative. Uh, when you don't have aberrant re, re, uh, re innervation and you're certain that this third nerve is not going to come back, to uh, extirpate the, the lateral rectus, combine it with a, t a large resection of the, of the medial rectus muscle. Thank you.